All right, guys, so we're going to be making this render, which you see on your screen right now. So this is a product visualization render, and we're going to be designing these products from scratch. Um, we're going to be modeling them ourselves in Blender, and then we're going to be adding the textures. Uh, we're going to be UV unwrapping this, and we're going to be um, creating the texture, uh, this label in Photoshop. You can create it in other editing softwares as well. I'm going to show you how to do it in Canva as well, because that's free and a lot of people use it. Um, so there's that. And apart from that, we are going to be adding the texture on this. We're going to be importing this cube. Um, and some of these models from Blender Kit. Uh, Blender Kit is an add-on. It's a free add-on, which you can download in um, Blender. I'm going to show you how to add that add-on as well. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, let's start. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be opening Blender first. And we can just create a new project. Let's get rid of everything. Press Ctrl S to save it. I'm going to say product underscore design SS. And let me just go down. And you can save it wherever you want, right? So here we have it. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be simply adding a mesh, which is going to be a cylinder. So obviously we're going to be creating this mesh first. So this is a cylinder. So obviously we're going to start with the cylinder. Now I would recommend you to actually start with a reference um, because that's going to give you an, a good idea of what you're trying to make. Now, where exactly do you get references? You can simply go to Pinterest. And if I just go to Pinterest.com, you're going to see that we have a lot of um, product visualization renders. If you don't see them in your uh, home screen, then you can simply search for maybe, um, yeah, product shots or product photography, yeah, product photography. And you can just choose any one of these. You can just copy uh, any of these designs. Uh, you can take inspiration from them, uh, them and you can make your own changes as well. So I would highly recommend you to actually use a reference and to um, sort of model your uh, bottle based on any of these objects. Now, let's say you don't want to model them yourself. Let's say you don't want to model uh, the bottle yourself. There is an uh, there, you have other options as well. So what you can do is you can simply download the Blender Kit add on. Um, you can just simply go to the Internet, search for Blender Kit, just go to blenderkit.com and then you can just download this add on just download Blender Kit. And these are instructions. Uh, there are instructions right here. So you can just uh, follow these and you can install them. Um, install the add-on and once that is installed you can just simply click here go to blender gate and now you can search for any 3d model so i'm going to be writing maybe something like bottle let's see what comes up i'm just going to check this free first mark um because we only want free assets now we have all sorts of bottles for example this perfume bottle you can render this out um you can even render this this perfume bottle out or maybe if i search for serum you might get a serum bottle as well. Yeah, this one, you can change the textures of this bottle and then you can render this as well. Or uh, this one is paid, but it's a pretty good model as well. So yeah, these are some options which you have. However, we are going to be modeling the product ourselves because let's say uh, a client comes to, comes to you and says that they need a specific model of their own product. So obviously you're not going to be get, uh, you're not going to be able to get that model from the internet, right? So yeah, in some cases you might be able to, but in most you won't, right? So we're going to be modeling it ourselves. I'm just going to go to the front view and let's dive into edit mode and i'm going to press alt z to go into x-ray mode so that we select all uh, basically we select all vertices if i just get out of my x-ray mode and if i select them if i select all vertices you're going to see that it's only going to select half of them so we, we don't want that right so i'm going to alt z to edit mode now you're going to see it's going to select all of them and so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be scaling it up s z so i'm going to be scaling it up in the z axis so i just pressed s and z and something like that seems to be good I'm just going to be eyeballing it. However, if you're making a proper 3D model uh, of any object, then I would highly recommend you to use a reference. Now I'm going to be selecting these bottom ones and let me just extrude them out in the Z axis slightly. And then let's scale it down, something like that, because we're going to create that, um, what do you call it? That bottom part. Now we can move on to the top, select all these, extrude them up slightly and just scale them down like that. Right, so that's going to be our bottle and it's pretty simple. Um, we are going to be adding a subdivision surface modifier to this because we want to make it smooth. Right now it's way too um, sharp and it's, it has a lot of these jagged lines. So I'm going to be going to the modifier menu and I'm going to be adding a modifier, subdivision surface modifier. Now you're going to see it looks absolutely trash. So we're going to fix that in just a bit. Levels viewport and the render, view, uh, render levels. I'm going to set them both to three because that is what we want. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be going to the top and with this top selected, I'm just going to be pressing I on my keyboard to inset. I'm going to inset a little bit, something like that. And that's going to get rid of those um, weird uh, issues which we had. So if I just undo it, you're going to see that 
right now we have these weird shading issues on the top so if i just insert it slightly you're going to see that it's going to get rid of most of them however we still do have some issues right so i'm going to be inserting it once again and make this circle very small so now there are no um uh, none of those weird issues are present anymore so um yeah by the way if if let's say you move somewhere else and if you can't like properly rotate your camera just select your object press alt on your keyboard and press the middle mouse button so it's going to focus your camera on that object and now you can uh, freely orbit your camera around that object right so i'm pretty sure you know the basics of how to move stuff uh, how to move your camera in in blender however i just wanted to give you a quick tip so i'm going to be adding some loop cuts i'm going to press ctrl and r and we're going to drag over this area and let's add a loop cut right there now what loop cuts do is that they make your um, edges sharper so right now you're going to see this edge is pretty smooth so if i just add a loop cut right here you're going to see that it becomes pretty sharp and this as well something like that right now it looks pretty good it is smooth but it is um just the right um smoothness which we want at the bottom again we have these weird shading issues so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be double clicking this line so if i double click this it's going to select the whole edge loop or alternatively you can go to face select mode and you can select just simply select this bottom face it doesn't really matter which one you do press i and just drag it down and once again so now those weird shading issues are gone and i'm going to be adding some loop cuts down there as well actually i think this one should be enough yeah just one seems to be enough perfect so now we have this bottle ready now let's move on to the next step which is going to be uh, this cover so this cover is actually pretty simple as well uh, you can simply add another cylinder although what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be um just going to edit mode just tab into edit mode and i'm going to be selecting this edge loop so i just double clicked this edge now make sure that you don't double click right here because if you do that it can uh, either select this edge loop or you can select like this edge loop so it doesn't really give you the guarantee of selecting that however if you select if you click on this area then it's gonna for sure select this edge loop so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be duplicating this edge loop and i'm going to be using it uh, i'm going to be extruding it to create the top um cap so al uh, although if you don't understand this that that's no problem at all you can just simply go to mesh and you can create a new cylinder and you can bring it up but the problem with that is that we're going to have to apply um the subdivision surface modifier again and we're going to have to set the settings again so i just think this step uh, this um is just easier and it just saves some time Right, so what I'm going to do is that with this selected, I'm going to press Shift D. Now we can just duplicate it. And if I right click on my mouse, uh, you're going to see that it's going to reset the position. Now we have two uh, sets of vertices in that exact same position. Now if I press P on my keyboard, it's going to separate. And it's going to ask us uh, by like which property are we going to separate. So I'm just going to be select separating this by selection. And now with all those vertices selected, it's going to create a new object. If I just get out of my edit mode now, you're going to see that we have one cylinder, which is obviously this whole bottle. And we have another cylinder, which is not actually a cylinder. It's just this one line of vertices, which we can then extrude. I'm just going to go into edit mode, press A to select everything. And now we can extrude this. And the good thing about this is that all the modifiers have been already up, uh, already um, applied. So we don't need to worry about that. Oops. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be selecting everything. And let's scale it up in the X and the Y axis. So the way we do that is by pressing Shift Z. So it's going to scale it up in all axes except for the Z axis. I think something like that should be good. GZ, move it down. G to move um, and Z to move it. Z to lock it to the Z axis. Something like that seems to be good. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be selecting, double clicking this bottom edge right here to select the bottom edge loop like this. And then with all these selected, I'm just going to be pressing F to fill this in. And so it's going to create a new face down there. If I just undo it, you're going to see if I go to my face select mode, you're going to see that we don't have any face down there, right? But if I just select, if I go into edge select mode and if I select this bottom loop and if I press F, now if I go into face select mode, you're going to see that we have a face down there. So that's just a good thing. And now with that face select, I'm just going to be inserting it so that obviously we don't get that um, shading issue. And once again, like that. Now I want this edge to be pretty sharp, so I'm going to be adding a loop cut down there. Something like that should be good. Let's get out of our edit mode and let's see how it looks. I think it looks pretty good. It does look a little smooth though. Maybe we can add a loop cut down there. Something like that should be good. Yeah. Now obviously this all this comes down to your personal preference. If you want something which is a little more um you know uh a little more smooth, then you can go for that of course. Otherwise you can go for a little more sharp um edge if you want. 
I'm going to be doing the exact same thing to the top part as well. So just double click this edge so that we select the edge loop, press F to fill it in, press I to inset slightly and then more so that we uh, get rid of that shading issue. Now I inset it too much. I'm just going to be scaling it up slightly because we don't, we don't need to do it that much. And let's add loop cut right there. Perfect. Now our bottle is almost complete. Um, and yeah, it was pretty simple, wasn't it? The only thing which I'm going to do is that I'm going to be selecting all these vertices at the top, press G and press Z to like scale it up. And I think that looks a bit better because previously the, the gap was way too small. Um, and of course we can tweak the, we can tweak the whole, um, the dimensions of the bottle later on as well. I might want to you see, just make this slightly smaller. I think we're good to go. Yeah. So that is going to, going to be the first bottle. Now I would recommend you to actually name your assets. I'm going to name this bottle and I'm going to name this gap In this collection. We're going to name bottle zero one. So there's going to be the first bottle and let's move on to the next bottle, which is actually going to be pretty simple. It's going to be very similar. Um, and in fact, I'm going to be using the same exact mesh. I'm going to be duplicating this to create that other bottle. So let me just go to the top view and let me just move it aside in the Z axis so that we can duplicate it and model this one right here. And Press Shift D uh, with the selected press Shift D on your keyboard to duplicate this. Press X to lock into the X axis and let's bring it back to the center. Right. So now you're going to see that we have this uh, duplicate inside of that bottle one. So I'm just going to be dragging it out and let's right click this and press this new collection option. And then we can move it inside this new collection. Now I'm going to name this bottle 02. And that's perfect. Let me just collapse these collections. And obviously this one is going to be way shorter. So I'm just going to be selecting the bottom vertices, press G, Z, and I think something like that should be good. And you're going to see, you're going to notice one thing is that in this, we have a very sharp cut and then it, it just continues up straight. So we're going to be doing that right now. So what I'm going to do firstly is that I'm going to go to the side view and let's go into extra mode so that we can select all vertices. And with this selected, I'm just going to be moving it down slightly, G, Z. And with this selected, I'm just going to be moving this down as well. And let me just scale that up slightly, something like that. And with the selected, let me just move this down as well. However, I'm going to scale this up as well. And then we can just simply extrude this E to extrude and something like that should be good. And E to extrude once again, so that uh, this basically does the job of adding sort of like a loop cut because obviously it's going to create another edge. So instead of adding a loop cut later on, I just simply extruded it a little bit and that just saves us time. Right. So I think it looks pretty good. Uh, now to make the edges a little sharper, I'm just going to be select double clicking this edge, select this edge loop, press G twice on your keyboard. If I press G once, you're going to see that we can move it anywhere if you want. I'm just going to right click so to reset this. Now if I press G twice, you're going to see that we can only move this in the axis of that um, edge. So this is a really helpful tool if you are uh, trying to maintain uh, the physical look of the scene, uh, physical look of your object while trying to move your, um, what do you call it, your edges. So I can just do the same thing with this as well. Press G twice, move it up to make this sharper. I think that looks pretty good. And again, with this, it's a little smooth. So I'm going to be adding a loop right there. Make it sharp. Double click this, move it down, G twice. And that looks pretty good. Now, obviously on the top, we're going to have to create sort of like an opening. So I'm going to be going to face select mode. I can just select this face. Now we have two options, although uh, either we can just simply press shift and we can individually select all these faces. Now that's going to be very time consuming. Um, so instead, what we're going to be doing is that I'm simply going to be pressing control on my keyboard and plus on my number pad. Now, if you don't have a number pad, then don't worry. You can just simply go to file, uh, actually not file, edit, go to preferences and inside this input, uh, you can just press this emulate numpad and now you can just press the plus uh, plus key on your um, number number line that um, line on top of your keyboard which has all the numbers you can just press the plus key on that and it's going to work as uh, your number pad so I'm just going to press control plus so it's going to select it's going to basically expand the selection so I'm just going to be scaling it up slightly to make these edges closer and now we can just extrude it down press extrude and I'm just going to be taking it down slightly something like that left click and then I'm going to be extruding it again. Now we could directly extrude it, but that's going to be, that's going to make it way too smooth. So that's not something we want. So I'm just going to be extruding it a little bit like that. 
Now one problem which I am noticing is that actually I think it's fine. I was gonna say that this edge is way too thick. However, I think it's fine. I think it looks pretty good. I can maybe select double click this edge and I can maybe scale this up slightly so that we make it more smooth. However, I don't think that's necessary. I can just do it slightly. Something like that should be good. Now we can continue this uh, down there, but since we're not going to be seeing the inside of the bottle, uh, inside of this container, uh, I'm not going to bother with that. So yeah, but it's your choice. If you want to do it, you can definitely do it. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be simply duplicating this cap, press shift D, Z, and we can just place it right there. And we can then edit it to match this bottle. So I'm going to make sure that it is, this cap is also inside the bottle two collection because we want to keep our scene very neat and organized. Another thing which I'm noticing is that this bottom part uh, of this container is way too small. Uh, it's way too so soft. So in this, it's way too sharp. It's like a lot sharper. So I'm going to make this sharper as well. Let's just go into side mode and let's select all these bottom edges, G, Z, and I'm just going to be moving them up slightly. So that's going to make them a lot sharper. And maybe you can just select this edge loop Press G twice and move it down so that the edge becomes tighter. Perfect. Now let's go to our side view again and let's um, go into extreme mode. With the select, I'm just going to be scaling it up like that so that it sort of matches the dimensions of this bottle, uh, this container, like that. Bring it down slightly. And of course, it's way too large. So I'm going to be selecting the top ones and I'm going to be pressing G and Z. Bring them down like that. And now we have our container ready. The only thing which I'm concerned about is that it's way too smooth compared to our bottle. I'm going to be pressing A to select everything and let's scale it up slightly. And we are going to have to make the make these edge loops closer to the edges. So I'm just going to press G twice, bring them closer so that it becomes more sharp. And like that. I think we are good to go. Maybe this one we can probably, yeah, I think it's fine. All right, we're good to go. Um, maybe we can probably bring this down a little bit. I'm going to press, I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard so that we can make minor adjustments. Usually if I just move my uh, mouse, it's going to move it th in this speed. But if I hold shift, you're going to see that it's going to move it much slower. So that's going to allow for more accurate and more precise movements. Let's just bring this down slightly. And I think we're good to go. Just save your project and the modeling part is done. And now the fun part is going to begin. We're going to do the texturing and we're going to create the rest of the scene. So yeah, let's begin with that. 